take uh, traction or something like that in many places, not just for cigarettes. Uh, very interesting the idea of constructing a mountain shaped area. Like yeah, yeah. To escape the mountain in a way, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a strange landscape. But you know, uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about this uh, when I was thinking about how to do the museum of the cemetery with these friends. We start thinking that, uh, I don't know, perhaps the place for the memories of the others and all that would be something really virtual or, no, now? And also, uh, I saw a website when you can, um, there is this website for Facebook that when you die, uh, you can write your uh, last words and appears on your interface of Facebook. And these kind of ideas uh, that for us are like uh, science fiction, but you know, I, I couldn't imagine that you could find a video of your grandfather talking to everybody or to you if you have the code, or, I don't know. I think that the uh, imagination of the, um, of the space for the dead people, it's important at this moment. For, 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 because we, we are losing all the ritualistic uh, things. Uh, uh, and uh, for me it's interesting to, to think how could be the new ritualistic uh, experiences to, to have memory of other people. I love this, this uh, film of Truffaut because he's uh, totally obsessed on dead people and he, he's all, always vindicating where, where is the space for them. No? And, uh, and it's something about memory, something about also architecture. And And I was talking about this moment of the Russian uh, Soviet moment because they, they were imagining things that were so strange, no? Uh, at that moment, and that are, for us now, they are like uh, cybernetics or this kind of things. And uh, they were doing architectural fiction in a way, no? And it's, I suppose it's the thing that you do when you do urbanist things uh, about the future of the, and the uses of, of living people, <laughs> but also dead people, no? in a way. Um, I think I'm, I'm interested in um, fear and death, and just sort of, um, I've been, for our project, because we're doing the, the underworld and the underground, a lot of times in Western philosophy, um, that's represented by by death. Mm -hmm. And in Eastern philosophy, like in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, or in Chinese philosophy with the myths of, of um, you know, the underground being just a mirror, mm -hmm. a, a reflection of the overground, mm -hmm. you know, where where the underground is a much more beautiful and, and pleasant place to be. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested to hear your opinion of, of why you think um, in Western philosophy we have this fear of, of the underground or of death and why we're so obsessed with preserving our, our current um, state on earth. Like, I mean, I, we, I'm sure we, that there's tons of, of but. Of course, the Spanish people because of the religion. Because of religion, uh, okay. Of course, the Christian, Jew, Jew Christianity mm -hmm. background, of course. And you know, for, for, for us, uh, I don't, uh, I thought in a moment to talk about this, uh, the, the idea of death for, for the Baroquian moment in Spain that is really crazy also. So crazy as this was, not the imagination of, the hyperrealistic uh, imagination of the body, um, the descomposition, um, yeah, yeah, and the body, and, and I think that for for 
for us, for the South uh, uh, culture, so, I mean also, of course, it, it, it's yeah. Christianity. And uh, the image of uh, the head. Mm -hmm. But when I mean, how many people are actually religious? <laughs> and yeah. not, I mean, there's, there's that idea of that in our minds, but um, yeah. But I think that this, this thing that uh, Adias wrote about that, the, the you, you are not scared really because of your own death. You are more scared about the death in general, yeah. and especially the it, it has gone to the family. It's a, it has now it's a family responsibility, mm -hmm. and uh, in in older times it was a s more social and uh, common responsibility. And he explained, for example, that uh, and you can read it also in, in medieval literature when when. Someone was in the battle, the soldier, was uh, going to die, and he was always in peace, like uh, it's my moment, and, and accepting because uh, it yeah. was, uh, and then uh, it's also the developing of individualities, and it goes with all the developing of the history of mankind related with that, no? The concept of oneself, is, it's not the death, it's my death, and then it's not my death, it's uh, my beloved death, and so. And he writes something that is, is funny, in a way, for me, that uh, in the States there, are, there is a more uh, acceptance of death, and uh, he talks also about the presence of the body. For example, when I, I show you Lenin and study body, uh, there is a philosopher that is uh, that is called Boris Groys, who wrote something that I like very much. That says that uh, Stalin, Stalin uh, made this mummy of uh, Lenin because he wanted to show everybody that he was the the, the body was there. Because if if uh, the if the body is not there, is alive, and he wanted to be the the next one, no. And then if you see realistically that the body is there, you see that it's there. And, and this, uh, in this book, uh, Arya says that uh, there is a more natural relationship uh, with the body, with the dead body in the States, that I, I, I'm not sure that I understand. I suppose it's another background and other things. And, and the, he says also that they are uh, naturalizing the dead again, and the people want to come back uh, to to a more natural, not non-hospitalized uh, uh, death, and, and there is a, like a movement in a way to accept uh, more normally the, the death. I think it's a very, very complex. Uh, I just uh, maybe have a more technical uh, question, which is um, uh, because I've been working as an exhibition architect, and mm -hmm. I, I was just wondering how you, I don't think it works. Does, does it work? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how you uh, were imagining to tell this story in, in the museum? I know you maybe haven't thought about, uh, I mean, I, I know it's a sort of a research uh, work. In the museum of the cemetery, do yeah. you mean? Yes, I mean, it's just because your, to your story is very interesting and very sort of... Uh, no, I, I don't want to explain all these things at all. In the no, I, okay. I did an exhibition about this, and, uh, and I had a, this exhibition that I did in Madrid, uh, it had a chapter called Dreams and Nightmares of uh, in the Construction of the Soviet uh, Homo, Homo Sovieticus. And uh, I, I put together many works of Lisitsky, architecture, uh, theater, art, music, because there is a big moment of uh, 
innovation in sound and experimental sound and I, I put the sternings and many, for example, a, a machine to dance that you can dance and make uh, music at the same time that sounds something really new, but it was made in the 20s. And, and uh, I tried to, to, to put together utopia and dystopia to see how the imagination could be and how uh, it could be also dangerous in the way when you want to, to to construct something like that, no? That's mm -hmm. the communist uh, project. Okay. And on the other hand, uh, I start with the idea, the, I, I wanted to, to explain you this idea of made the uh, museum of a cemetery because it was something real that happened to me, this possibility. And I, I, I wanted to do not a very, no, not to talk in a narrative story, more to collaborate with artists or musicians or, and to, I think that I had a romantic idea uh, to, that I, I heard in uh, some place, I can read, or I read, when the, um, the Holocaust in Berlin, the Philharmonic uh, was full of Jew people and uh, many of the musicians uh, were killed, of course. And uh, at the end of the war, the other colleagues used to, to they tried to find the, 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 the places where they were, where they were killed, and they, they joined together to play for them. And this idea to play for the dead people, the dead South, uh, I think it's uh, something that I like. It's like something <laughs> evocating, mm. uh, something like that. And and, and I was uh, just starting to work in this, and I was <laughs> asked to be the director of this uh, center of exhibitions. So I'm not sure that I can finish this project uh, because it has nothing to do with our center, which in other. Uh, in other hand, as uh, Alessandra told you, it's uh, doing many, many things uh, related with architecture. So mm -hmm. I invite you to come and, and to present projects. Uh, I have a question on, um, well, the, the end of your talk and then uh, if we look back, the starting point with the cemetery story, and um, you, you were emphasizing that we lack rituals today, or we are searching for a new definition of, of ritual, and that that could be the, another al alternative attitude for the museum project. Yeah. And um, so, as we were following you, and, and um, the talk was fascinating. Um, it leaves me with an idea that you seem to believe that artists are the only or the last ones that can produce a ritual, which even if it is looking at constructing something still is uh, an open form and not destructive form or a negative form. So do you still believe art is, is uh, yeah, the, our last opportunity for having rituals? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the answer is clear, and uh, yeah, w it's just one word. I think so, and and of course, uh, when I was talking about this uh, Alexei painting that I really recommend you, I, I wrote it already. Yeah, I think so. Or no? Just a minute. He is an artist. also philosopher. He is part of, of a group that is called Cho de Lat, in, that means uh, what's need to be done. That is also the name of uh, an important, the most important book of Lenin. Uh, that was also the, the name of a book of a famous uh, utopic uh, novel by Chernyshevsky that uh, Lenin wrote, uh, read and he liked it very much. And these people of Chodelat, they are uh, vindicating um, communism and other things that uh, 
are not easy to talk <laughs> in the, when, when you are in, with this background of uh, Stalinism and so and so, but uh, they work with the idea of um, the art as a process, the art as a non-commercial non thing and uh, space of uh, thinking and of course of uh, uh, way of uh, do things in another way, no? And uh, he is, I think I th he is thinking about uh, the politicals of uh, sleeping because of he is an artist and everything is related. And for me, the politicals of uh, sleeping is similar to the politicals of deaf people. These people that is not productive is the it's it's uh, it's other thing, no? So uh, I wanted to relate it because yeah, and yes, uh, I think that uh, art and 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 they have this this awful uh, for many people realistic art of the twentieth mm, century, but in a way it was. Uh, of course, an, an, a non-realistic thing because it didn't represent nothing that was true. It was idealistic, but it was also in a concept that we don't have that art uh, is not commercial. No? So uh, many people is investigating the relationship of this last avant-garde and the social realism as a consequence of the way of thinking, the processes of art. And this is a field very interesting for me also. I appreciate that. <laughs>